Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to sew an all-in-one facing. We are going to be doing the Miri tank top today, which I have right here and I'm also wearing. And I really like this method of a facing because it's really clean. Sewing the facing in this method can also be called the burrito method because you're rolling up your fabric. So it might seem a little bit tricky or I think it even like seems impossible that it works out, but it's not too hard if you just take it step by step. Let's get started. Just a quick note before we dive in. This process is a bit repetitive, so I'm going to try to be as efficient yet thorough as possible. And if you want to skip ahead, I have timestamps down in the show notes. All right, we're going to jump right in on attaching the facing to our top. So here I have the front and back pieces. I've already sewn the center back seam, the shoulder seams, and the darts in the front of the top. I've also stay stitched the neck and the armholes, and I've finished the edges of the side seams. I've done the same things where appropriate for our facing, and there is interfacing on here. So I have my back and front right side up, so the wrong side of the fabric is down, the inside is down, and we're just going to align these up and pin around the neckline. And you can use the shoulder seams as a guide to make sure that you have it lined up. And I like to put pins right through both sides of that shoulder seam just to make sure that those um, are held down and flat and that they don't flip up while stitching. And I'm doing view B, so I have this um, kind of squared off back and a V-neck front, which makes it nice and easy to line up. And if you want, you could also use a wash away marker to draw the seam allowance along here. That will give you a guide to follow while you're stitching, and that can be especially helpful on the v-neck and the square edges. So if you want to draw that um, seam allowance guide, it's probably easier to do it before you put pins in, but I would just take the ruler and line up that 5 eighths of an inch marking along the cut edge and then draw lines. Okay, now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, I have my machine set up with a regular straight stitch and I have marked off my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now I usually like to start at the shoulder seam and let's get this in here. If it's easier for you, you can also take off the drawer um, if your machine has that capability. And I like to stitch with my interfacing side up, especially because I have made some markings here. Okay, we're not quite there yet. It always feels like you have to stitch really far into that v-neck. So I like to stop a little early and test it. And to be honest, my marking was not that great earlier. Um, it was a little bit rough. So I'm gonna just go with my seam allowance guide. That is all stitched and now we can grade the seam and clip into the corners. 
To grade this seam, that just means that we trim down the seam allowances with um, different levels. So you wanna trim the interfacing side, the facing side, a little bit shorter than the body of the fabric. And I'm gonna use these applique scissors. Um, kind of the duckbill shape makes it a little safer or a little bit easier just to pull up that one layer of fabric. The drawback to them is that they're very short, so you can't cut very far with one snip. But I'm just gonna trim that down to about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And then I also like to trim just a little bit off of the body. So maybe an eighth of an inch off of there. So what this, why we do this is because we don't wanna bump from the seam allowance when everything is turned right side out. So this is just creating like a smooth transition from the seam line to the end of the seam allowance. So you wanna go all the way around and trim these up. You know, just be careful not to catch any of your um, main fabric in the trimming. This is probably one of the more boring parts of sewing is trimming, but I think it is really important to do all these steps and grade your seam allowances in order to have a nice looking garment in the end. And before you do totally cut away all this seam allowance and clip into the V, it's probably a good idea to just do a double check, make sure that your stitching is accurate and that it looks good. I think I actually did a pretty good job on my first run. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down. So now to get our facing to lie flat, we need to cut in to our seam allowance. And this will just give more movement to the fabric so that it can fall into place when we reverse it. So I like to use these little thread snips because they're very sharp um, and you just wanna go very carefully and be careful to cut close to your stitching line but not all the way through it. Just cut in just like that. And then you can also come back and trim this down um, just to give it a little more room for when it is turned right side out. You might notice that my cutting lines are not absolutely perfect and that's okay. Um, we're just trying to get this gradation and you're never gonna see these cut lines again and you won't notice these little bumps really. We need to do the same thing on this back side at these back corners. So here again, we just clip into the corner, very close, but not all the way, and then trim in, cut away a little triangle. And if you don't have these kinds of scissors that I have, either the snips or the duckbill scissors, that's totally okay. You can use your regular fabric scissors. I do recommend that you have some pair of scissors that um, works for fabric because your regular like kitchen scissors probably won't be able to cut as easily. Um, and it'll just be more pleasant to use your fabric scissors. And if you were making the rounded neckline, you would snip in, just kind of like this, snip in towards the seam line, not cutting through it and this will help your rounded neckline turn smoothly when you turn it right side out. Um, and it won't hurt to do it on this v-neck, um, but it's less necessary. Now we need to just use our iron and press the facing and the seam allowance away from the top. Okay, here I am at the pressing station and I have a tailor's ham here just to help me out um, when I am pressing these kind of curved edges. I feel like it's really helpful to have this curved surface. So what we're gonna do is press our seam allowance towards our facing and Technically you can skip this step and go right into the understitching, but I think it can be kind of helpful to get it a little more accurate. Um, and whether you press from the inside or the outside is up to you. Um, I'm gonna show you from the inside so that you can really get a good idea of what's going on. 
So what we're trying to do is press the seam allowance towards the facing. And our whole goal is to get this facing on the inside of the garment so that it's not visible when we're wearing our top. And right here, I can kind of feel or see that this doesn't want to lay really flat. So I have my little snips here and I'm just going to come in and give it a few more snips um, to loosen up this seam allowance. I'm going to trim these too. And you can see that once those are cut, they'll be able to lay more flat. And we'll do this other side. Get in here and clip a few more times. At this point, you can even flip your facing to the wrong side and press it all flat. So you can see, here's the outside of the top and we cannot see the facing at all. And we have a little bit of wrinkling down at our v-neck so that's a sign that we want to clip into that v-neck a little bit more so we're gonna turn this back wrong side out just gonna get a little bit closer there's a little bit of wrinkling there but i think i can coax it flat with my iron And you can even just use your fingers and finger press it and then use the iron. The iron might be a little too strong sometimes. So that's gonna be okay. Um, same thing back here. You can see this is looking pretty flat and we just need to press it a little bit. Okay, let's head over to the sewing machine. All right, now we're ready to understitch. And what the understitch is, is we stitch our seam allowance to the facing, and this helps ensure that it stays on the wrong side. Now you can do this with your um, wrong side up or with the right side up. It's really your choice. Um, I tend to do it with the wrong side up to make sure that I'm catching all of the seam allowance, especially when you have clipped the seam allowance. Sometimes, you know, like one part can get folded the wrong way when you have this side down. So I like to set my machine to a 3.0 length um, just because I think it's unnecessary to stitch with a smaller length because you don't have a lot of stress on these seams. This is really just holding something in place, kind of like a basting stitch. So let's start down here at one side of the V. Now, one thing to be aware of is you are not going to be able to stitch kind of around the whole circumference of that seam line. You're gonna to have to do some stopping and starting. Um, sometimes you won't be able to access all of the seam allowance and that is okay. So let's get started here. And you can just use your fingers to hold that seam allowance towards the facing. And I like to stitch pretty close to my seam line, like maybe an eighth of an inch away. Um, and you'll, you'll just want to be careful that you don't stitch on the body of your top. A little back stitch to hold it in place. From here, you'll understitch all the way around the neckline, starting and stopping at any of those corner points. If you want to learn more about understitching, I have another video that's all about it, and I'll put a link to that down in the show notes. Now that we have sewn and trimmed and understitched our neckline, it's time to sew the armholes to the facing and finish these edges. So as it goes with sewing most of the time, we want to have our fabric with the right sides together. So to get our right side of the top 
Next to the right side of our facing, we are going to roll this up. So we're gonna make this nice and small and tight. And then we can bring our facing around to this side. Bring this little wing too. And then we can pin this together. And this might seem a little bit tricky and it's a little bit different than maybe some um, more straightforward projects but in practice, it's pretty simple. So I wanna make sure that I get this shoulder seam lined up. I'm gonna put a pin on either side. There are also notches in this pattern that you can use to help line up your pattern or line up your top and your facing. And then you would just want to pin it all together and make sure that the rest of your top is not going to get caught in the seam. Now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and just sew right along here. Okay, I have my machine set to a straight stitch with a normal length. And again, I'm using my 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. Um, if you are sewing view B with the um, squared off armholes, you could mark the um, seam allowance right on your inner facing, and that will give you a good guide for stitching. I'm going to kind of eyeball it and use my guide. Start at the beginning and do a little back stitch. check and make sure that I don't get my top in this seam allowance. That's one thing to be really careful of. Okay, now that we've stitched that seam, we want to grade our seam allowance just like with the neckline. going to go ahead and clip into this corner. Again, you want to be really careful to only cut the seam allowance. Um, try not to cut your top and try not to cut through your stitching. We just want to cut really close to it. Now we want to turn this right side out. So you just reach inside and then start pulling your top through one of the openings and it's kind of like magic that you're going to be able to pull it out. Now we can go over to the iron and press this flat and then we'll take it back to the sewing machine to understitch. So for our armhole we don't really have very good access to this seam anymore because it's enclosed. So we'll just need to use our fingers to gently press it flat. And I have my inside up, this is the facing. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to push it, um, kind of roll the facing a little bit to the inside and then press. So here, you know, you just wanna try to get it as flat as possible get that seam close to the edge, but keep the facing on the wrong side. Get this angled corner out, nice and flat. Okay, now we can go under stitch. I'm not going to have complete access to the seam line. So I'm going to show you how that works and we're just going to stitch as far as we can with the understitching. Um, this is very normal, so don't worry if sometimes you're not able to understitch all the way. So you just start at one end and go as far as you can and then go to the other side 
and start there and go as far as you can the other way. And all you wanna do is make sure that you are only stitching the seam allowance to the facing. And as I go, I'm just gonna keep moving the fabric out of the way so that I have access to only the part I wanna stitch. almost to the shoulder seam now and I'm having a really hard time seeing where I'm stitching. So I'm going to back stitch and cut the thread. Next, I will go to the other side of my armhole and repeat the process. Again, I just got as far as I could close to that shoulder seam. And you'll find that sometimes going from one direction is a little bit easier than the other because um, there's just extra room in the pattern. It's easier to get inside, but that is really it. You just wanna cut these threads and um, make sure it's all clean, but that will help keep your facing on the wrong side of your garment. So next we are going to repeat this process that we did for the first armhole for the second armhole. So we need to roll this finished side all up like this. And then we're going to wrap our facing around so that we can get the facing right sides together with our top. So you can just kind of flip it around, grab your pins, we, again, this is the same as before. We will pin at the shoulder seam, the notches, and the edges. And I actually like to stitch with the interfacing side up. So I'm gonna flip it over and pin from this side. Um, kind of rule of thumb for what to choose to have up or down. I like to have the piece of fabric down that is less stable. So in this case, it would be the, um, the fabric, not the interfacing. Um, so the side that's less stable or um, that will need to be eased in to the other fabric. So if one of your pieces of fabric got a little stretched out, put that one on the bottom and the feed dogs should help fit it back into the right shape. Okay, I'm going to stitch right along here, just like we did before, and then grade the seam, clip into the corners, and then I'll meet you back right here. Okay, I've sewn this second armhole, graded the seam, clipped it, clipped into the corners, and now it's time to turn it right side out. And this doesn't seem like it would work. I can't wrap my head around why it works, but it does. So <laughs> all you do again, stick your hand in between the facing and the top and just pull the top right side out. Okay, just pull it out through that armhole and there we have it. The last step is going to be pressing this edge and understitching, and then your facing is all attached and you can proceed with sewing the side seams. Well, I hope that that video was helpful for you. I love how clean this facing looks. Let's look at the outside too. I just love how it finishes everything off really smoothly you don't have to do any top stitching and it's completely invisible from the outside. If you have any questions about this process, please let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in getting this pattern, I will have a link down in the show notes. This is one of my favorite patterns that I've ever done. And it comes in sizes zero to 32. And for every size, there are three cup sizes, A, B, C, D, and E, F. 
I really wanted this to be a beginner friendly pattern. So I included the cup sizes so most people won't need to do a full or small bust adjustment. If you'd like to support the channel, you can visit the pattern shop or buy me a coffee. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the like button and hit the subscribe button down below. Happy sewing. Thank you.